Eubank Jr. obviously is interested in fighting the usual people. Golovkin, Canelo, all mm. these kind of guys. How do you think Eubank Jr.'s career is going to go from here? Do you think he's going to get any of them big fights? And how do you think he would do against Golovkin right now or Canelo, Charlos, any of these guys? Okay. For me, we're going to say one by one, okay? Mm -hmm. Against Canelo, forget it. He would get beat. He would get beat because he would have to come to Canelo. Canelo would counter him all night. So for me, he would definitely lose to, lose to Canelo. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but that's what I see. Uh, Chris Eubank Jr., we, we all know that he's one of the most athletically gifted fighters I've ever seen. Yeah, I think we can all agree of that on that. But when he has to come forward, like against Groves, he's... Uh, He's not as impressive. Mm. Really. So if he fights Canelo, he would have to come forward and he would get counter all night. Mm -hmm. For me, would be his worst, his worst defeat. Yeah. Against Pov against Golovkin, if you asked me a couple of years ago, I would tell you that Golovkin knocks him out or beat him on points. But right now, Golovkin looked okay in his last fight, but it was against an opposition which is not at the level of Eubank Jr. So... For me, I would say, I would favor Golovkin, but it's like 60-40 or 55-45. Uh, it's not that... Um, um, it seems like from the last fight I saw that Golovkin is trying to develop a back foot game. Mm. And some, some people say they were impressed by his head movement. I wasn't because, yeah, Golovkin's head movement are not, are not that great. Um, and about Eubank Jr., the thing is that he has been very inactive too, so we don't know where he is right now. Mm. And his last performance, I think he was fighting, what's his name? The, the Russian Southpaw. Uh, uh, Korobov. Yeah. And Korobov was beating him, him up in the first round and then he yeah. was injured. He got injured, yeah. This guy is very, Korobov is very unlucky. He, yeah. He's very unlucky. In his three defeats, he was very un unlucky. And we forget that even against Charlos, many people would say he could win. The, he, he won the fight. Yeah, a lot of people yeah. say that. Yeah. I, I disagree, but... You know, the, I can I can hear that. Um, so uh, I think from the three names you mentioned, I think you said you said Canelo, you said Golovkin, and you said uh, Charlo. Charlo, yeah. From all those three guys, the best chance he has is against uh, Golovkin. I think that Charlo, from his last performance against Sergei Davidschenko, where he did much better than Golovkin and uh, uh, Jacobs, uh, I think Charlo right now is very dangerous. Very dangerous, and um, Chris Eubank Jr. doesn't have the best defense in the world. And uh, he's a very Charlo is a very prolific puncher. You give him one opportunity, and from a blink of an eye, he can knock you out. Mm. So I think from all those three guys, he should fight Golovkin. But I don't think Golovkin. Um, I don't think Golovkin would accept that fight. Mm. He wouldn't gain much. Yeah, I agree. I think Golovkin would be the best fight for Eubank Jr. Uh, I'm not saying he would win, but I think he has a better chance against him than the other two. Uh, I think the Derevchenko fight, when Golovkin fought Derevchenko, that, to a lot of people, was like the beginning of the end for Golovkin. That's the worst he ever looked. He looked worse in the Derevchenko fight than in any other fight in his career. Worse than he looked against Canelo, worse than he looked against Danny Jacobs. Yeah. That Derevchenko yeah. fight, he looked so vulnerable in that fight. Yeah, he was hurt to the body several times. Yeah. And, and I'm telling you, there were some rounds when I would, when I was thinking to myself, if Golovkin, if Golovkin was a nobody, the ref would think about stopping it. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, Golovkin wasn't hurt, wasn't that hurt, but he was inactive. There were some moments where he was on the ropes and Derek Vincenko was opening up, on, opening up on him. And Golovkin, yeah, he has this bad habit to not throwing back and wait that his opponent stop. But one day someone will not stop. Yeah. You know, Korobov was another guy who always wanted to fight Golovkin because these Eastern European guys, mm. they they really get their reputation in the amateurs. You know, in, in, in Eastern Europe, amateur boxing is a lot more highly regarded than it is in, it is. in, in the West. Yeah. So like to them, the pinnacle, the height of your boxing career would be going to the Olympics and winning an Olympic gold medal. So yeah. I remember when these guys first came onto the scene, Dervinchenko, 
and um, particularly Korobov. And he was saying, because this was when Golovkin was at his peak, he was saying, you watch, I know how to fight Golovkin. You know, I, I'm from the same amateur system. I know what to do against this guy. You guys don't know what you're doing. You wait till I get in there with him. And I think that Dervinchenko had that same attitude. You know, he felt like, okay, Golovkin is scaring all these fighters, these American fighters and whatever. That's because they don't understand the, you know, the way we fight. They don't understand the, the Eastern European style and the method that we have, but I understand it. So he went in, he went in there more confident, I think, than a lot of the American opponents that Golovkin has had because he's been in there. I don't, that, well, I don't think he fought Golovkin in the amateurs. I think there's too much difference in age, but he's definitely been in there with people like Golovkin in the Eastern yeah. European amateur system and in the gyms and stuff like that. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, you're, you're probably right, but this is a fight will, will probably never happen. So, um, yeah, Golovkin. I don't know, but this East European guy, yeah, they know it. They know each other, like uh, Berterbiev and Vosdik. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They know each other, and when you know their history, you understand why Vosdik was so gun shy sometimes. Yeah, yeah. It's in, they are in a, in, a, in a short circuit. They know each other. When they it, know each other. They're, when. they're talking about Golovkin fighting Jaime Mungia. What do you think about that fight? Well, it will be justice because Mongia was, uh, he agreed to fight Golovkin a couple of years ago when instead he fought Saddam Ali, yeah. if I remember correctly. But I think <sighs> Mongia is a guy who doesn't do anything particularly great, but he does everything good. Mm. Yeah, he's very complete, but uh, he's young. He's strong, but I don't see what he possesses that can trouble Golovkin. So he has a good chin, so I expect if they fight, I expect it to go on point. But um, he's not particularly fast. He doesn't fight with volume. Uh, he's not particularly elusive. So I don't see what he has that can trouble uh, Golovkin. I think Golovkin I think Golovkin will win. I think it will be a very macho uh, macho fight. And you know if you fight Golovkin with, in a macho fight where you're playing in his hands. Mm. So maybe he will try to box on the back foot. He's going to he's going to gain the in the ropes. Um the key for this fight will be the physical strength. If he's able to push Golovkin's back and Golovkin is not able to hurt him or keep him honest with those body shots. And those strange left hooks like that that he always throws, mm. then um, Mongia will not be able to do anything for me. Mm. You don't think Mongia? What, do you, you what do you think? I think. Well, I disagree about Mongia not having volume. I think Mongia throws a lot of punches, and he has a lot of energy. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, his, his, his physical strength, you know, back down at 154 pounds, I thought he was very strong. But since he's moved up to middleweight, he doesn't look as strong against these bigger guys. Like when he yeah. fought, when he fought that Japanese guy, he was getting pushed around the ring a lot. Uh, when he fought, who's the Australian guy that he fought? What's the guy's name? Uh, uh, Is it Dennis Hogan? I'm not so sure. Is it Dennis Hogan? Sweet. But he fought that Australian guy. And again, he didn't look that strong in that fight. So I think at middleweight, yeah, he, he maybe he needs to grow into his man strength because he's still young. So maybe as he gets older, he'll get stronger. But I don't think he would be stronger than Golovkin. I used to think maybe when he was at 154, if he moved up to middleweight, maybe he could just be too young and energetic for Golovkin. But yeah, looking at him against some of these middleweights, he doesn't appear to be that strong. So if he tries to box on the back foot against Golovkin, forget about it. I think the only mm -hmm. the only chance he has against Golovkin is if he's able to overwhelm him because that's one thing that obviously Mungia doesn't fight like Derevchenko. You know he can't get low. Derevchenko's a short guy, so he can get underneath Golovkin's punches and come up and 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 you know move around and make it awkward for Golovkin to hit him because he's fast. Mungia's not as fast as someone like that. He's not as difficult to hit, um, but he does have a lot of energy, and Golovkin was overwhelmed in the. Derevchenko fight. If he can overwhelm Golovkin like that, Mungia, just with volume and, you know, youth, energy, then maybe he'd have a chance. But from what I've seen lately, I, I wouldn't pick Mungia to win. But mm -hmm. the older Golovkin gets, the obviously, the better chance Mungia has mm -hmm. to, to just go in there and just be... Like, for example, 
is not the best example because, um, you know, Amir Khan is naturally bigger than Barrera. But when they fought, you know, Amir Khan just went in there and he was just faster and younger. You know, Barrera was, he, he didn't have anything. He was just too old at the time to do anything with yeah. Amir yeah. Khan. So maybe a similar situation to that where Golovkin just gets so old that Munguia's youth, his energy would just be too much for him. Hmm. Yeah, you might get you, you might get right, but I, I think Golovkin is not that diminished. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. Did you watch Golovkin's last fight? Yeah, I saw it. What do you think? Did he look good? I thought he looked quite good. Yeah, I thought he looked quite good. Um, you know, some people were saying that they weren't impressed and whatever, but I, I thought he looked okay. I thought he looked like the normal Golovkin. When when Golovkin's fighting that type of opponent, that's how he normally looks, to me. You know, so I thought he looked okay. I think that's that's a fight where it's hard to really criticize much from it because the opponent didn't really give him much back. So, you know, if the opponent had come with more resistance and he'd hit Golovkin more and given him more to think about, then I I can understand why people would criticize it. But the opponent really did really didn't have much to give. So, yeah. Yeah, like I said before, he tried to add some head movement and uh, some back foot game since he's working with Manis, uh, Devon Shukivir. No, Jonathan Banks. Jonathan Banks. Mm. Um, but so far, I don't see... Uh, um, yeah, I would pick Golovkin against Mongia. I've never been that impressed by Mongia, but he's fun to watch. I give him that. Yeah, but Golovkin's always had a back foot game. Maybe he's trying to work on it more, but he's always had a back foot game. Like when he fought David Lemieux, he wasn't necessarily boxing on the back foot, but he was boxing at long range against Lemieux. And even when he fought, in fact, when he fought Canelo in the rematch, Golovkin was on the back foot. Canelo was coming forward and doing all the Mexican style stuff. Golovkin was boxing on the back foot. So he's always at a back foot game. He had a back foot game, but he wasn't moving as much as he's now. Mm. When he fought Lemieux, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't moving around the ring. Well, he wasn't moving away. Yeah, but he was just keeping it a distance because that's a, because yeah. that fight that fight surprised a lot of people. A lot of people thought that Golovkin was going to go in there and start <laughs> trading with Lemieux, you know, like up close. But he didn't fight like that at all. He used his jab. He kept it at a distance. He understood that Lemieux doesn't have good balance, so Lemieux, yeah. And so Lemieux hits very hard. Yeah, it is very hard. So he thought, let me not take that risk. Let me just hit him with a jab, break him down, and yeah, that was a good performance actually by Golovkin. The way he dealt with yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah, Lemieux's weaknesses were exposed. Yeah, definitely. Were exposed that day. And Saunders did even better. Then Triple G? How? Yeah. I mean, he did good, but did he do better? He didn't get, he did, he didn't get hit even once. Golovkin did get hit a couple of times. Mm. Well, Golovkin got a stoppage. In terms of boxing, in terms of boxing, no, in terms of the result, yeah, he stopped him, so... Obviously, he was more, but Saunders, will, well, Saunders, for me, could have stopped Lemieux. There was a round where he could have stopped him, but he didn't for some reason. Mm. All right, so that's the next topic then. If you'd like to access all my boxing content advert free and enjoy the convenience of listening via a podcast app with the option to download in high quality MP3, then consider joining me on Patreon. In addition to the aforementioned perks, you'll also gain access to exclusive weekly live stream Q&A sessions and hangouts as well as uncensored, no-holds-barred uploads, which are too blue for YouTube. This includes my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. We've also got a Discord server where you can come and chat and hang out with myself and other members. Just head on over to my Patreon page and select the tier called Hatman Boxing Extra. There's no contract, there's no commitment, it's only £2.50 a month and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of hardcore boxing enthusiasts by signing up with me here on Patreon today.